This video was prepared to illustrate outcomes of a levee setback feasibility study completed by Pierce County Surface Water Management in 2008 with funding assistance from the Washington State Salmon Recovery Funding Board. In Washington State, Mount Rainier dominates the landscape of Pierce County. The Puyallup River and its two major tributaries, the White and Carbon Rivers, flow from glaciers of Mount Rainier to Puget Sound at Commencement Bay in the city of Tacoma. For almost 100 years, levees along the lower stretches of these rivers placed the rivers within narrowed and straightened channels to manage flooding. Periodically and inevitably, the rivers overflow these artificial boundaries and flood the surrounding land. Levee setback projects give the river more area to migrate and flood and are part of a comprehensive flood control solution. Starting in the city of Tacoma at Commencement Bay, we begin a flight upriver along the straightened channel of the Puyallup River. During the summer, the river's milky color reveals its origin as glacial meltwater. Shown here, is the extent of the 1% recurrence flood. That is a flood which has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year, also sometimes called the 100-year flood. This mapped extent was done as if the levees did not exist because these levees are not sufficient to contain the flood with the required margin of safety. The White River flows into the Puyallup River from the north. We proceed up the White River to the boundary with King County, which is the limit of our study area. Returning down the White River, we pass over the city of Sumner. As we proceed up the Puyallup River Valley towards the town of Ording, we pass the Riverside and Alterton areas. The Carbon River is seen entering the Puyallup from the left. The town of Ording lies between the Carbon and the Puyallup rivers. Upriver from Ording, we again highlight the levee system to point out two recently completed levee setback projects on the Puyallup. The Soldier Setback Levee, so named because of its proximity to the state veterans' home, was completed in 2006. The project removed the existing levee next to the river and built almost one mile of new levee further back to provide an additional 65 acres of area for the active river channel. The Ford setback levy was completed in 1998 and provides about 128 acres of additional area for the river. This provides more flood control and the connection of the river with its floodplain ultimately creates far better salmon habitat. In fact, these projects are the single most beneficial action we can take in these rivers for salmon. From here, we continue up the river to the Needham Road area, where Kapowison Creek joins the river from the right. The only levees in this area are maintained to protect the public roadways. This marks the upper limit of our study area on the Puyallup River, and we will turn around and head back down the river. We will be heading up the Carbon River, which we can see entering from the right. South Prairie Creek entering from the left is the largest tributary of the Carbon River. We continue up the Carbon River to the Allward Road area, which marks the upper limits of the study area. As we fly back down river, we pause at this point in the flyover video to look at a site where it would be feasible to construct a setback levee. We refer to this as the Allward Road Setback Levee, which is our highest priority site among six on the Carbon River. Much of the setback area has severe potential for channel migration and during the November 2006 flood the existing levee was breached at several spots. The setback levee would be about 1.9 miles long and would provide about 142 additional acres of active channel area. We've also shown an illustration of how we expect that setback levees will promote channel migration and create a complex channel structure with multiple braided channels, which is how these glacial rivers would behave in a natural environment. 
this complex habitat is highly beneficial for salmon and steelhead. As we continue downriver, properties owned by Pierce County Surface Water Management are outlined. Many of the parcels that would be needed for these projects are already owned, but additional properties would have to be acquired in each case. The Puyallup River is straight ahead, with the town of Ording on the right. Here we will make a quick trip up the Puyallup again past the two completed setback levees. In the Needham Road area, Pierce County has acquired many flood-prone properties from willing sellers. This removes people and their homes from harm's way and protects the floodplain from future development. Acquisition of the remaining properties may prove to be a more cost-effective solution than construction of a setback levy. For the rest of the flyover video, each of the potential setback levy sites is indicated by a white line showing a preliminary levy alignment as we retrace our path downriver. Looking down the valley with the Carbon River on the right and the Puyallup River on the left, we can see that there are many opportune sites to create additional setback levees. The county would have to purchase additional properties for these projects to proceed. Existing homes in these flood-prone areas would be removed to make way for setback levy projects. Not having structures in the floodplain makes good economic sense. This is the South Fork site, where we are planning to construct a setback levee within the next few years. The new levee would be about 0.7 miles long. It is not shown here, but Pierce County recently acquired more than half of the property within the proposed 32-acre setback area. This area currently experiences significant flooding on both sides of the river. A setback levee would be combined with improvements to the existing levee on the near bank to significantly improve flood control and also help fish by creating much more habitat diversity. Altogether, the study includes 20 sites on the Puyallup River and six each on the Carbon and White Rivers. Continuing downriver, we see that there are several potential setback sites near the confluence of the Carbon River with the Puyallup River. We quickly fly downriver. The White River enters the Puyallup River from the north. And finally, we zoom down the Puyallup River to end our tour. We hope you have enjoyed this brief flyover. For further information, please contact Pierce County Surface Water Management.